Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is missing, actually. <laughs> Where have I put that? Uh, okay, it was on the desk to the right of me. Today's beverage is a nice cup of tea, no sugar, and actually no milk because, well, the milk was off. Either way, in a previous video of Airships, we were once again designing and fighting and specifically going through the airship editor and altering a lot of our designs from the campaign. So we were looking at things like the uh, Bluebird, which was pretty much fine, but we also made the Goldfinch. Originally we had the, uh, sorry, yeah, the Goldfinch was the original one. The Greenfinch is the one we remodeled. The Herring Gull, we did talk about altering, but I don't think I touched that. The Honey Bee is a new thing with Suspendium Rays, and there has been suggestions to make this a little bit quicker, and I think that's a fairly decent suggestion. The Sparrowhawk is pretty good, and we uh, didn't really have to mess around there. And then the Toucan, which has got these two bits there, and I think people wanted us to rename it from the Toucan to something else. But either way, that's what we've got going. In this episode, we're not going to be altering, but we are going to be designing from scratch, and specifically, I want to make a vessel that is based around probably my favourite weapon in the game, which is the aerial torpedo. Although, to be fair, guided missiles are really cool, uh, the aerial torpedo is really, really cool, and the ray, the suspendium ray is good, but I wanted to make something that is based around the aerial torpedo, and make something that is going to be able to bombard static structures from range. So I want to have this so we can sit at the furthest range possible, quite heavily armoured and with a lot of staying power to basically <laughs> send all of these in and destroy structures. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be hopefully a successful build. I mean naturally you always want the build to be successful but I think the big difference between this build and others is that um, a lot of our ships are quite sort of get in there and do the job. This one's sticking around a bit more, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, over to our resources and to ammo store, and I'm placing one ammo there and one ammo there. Each one of these requires, let's see, explode easily, which is not good. Um, yeah, it requires two ammo per slot, so we've got 100 ammo in there, so I mean, that would be two ammo per shot, should I say. So that would be 50... Uh, that would be like 50 for each one. And each one controls 100. So, I mean, you can get like 25 shots each. Is that enough? I'm not convinced it is. Do you want to go for double ammo? 25? No, that's, that should be alright. Hmm. We'll try that. Okay, so we're going to have a fire extinguisher, which is going to go between the floors. I will put it sort of right at the front, one there and one there. That'll connect up them both, and the reason I've done... Actually, putting that there doesn't really do anything, but what I can do is have it so that from the front here, we can have, under Command and Crew, a telescope. This is obviously going to be a fairly decent teched ship. Um, I'm actually tempted to bring it back by one to there, because in between them, I can then put some quarters, which fitting quite nicely. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll go with that. We have to have somewhere to command it. I'm only... I'm just going to go with a cockpit, I think, for now. I don't think we really require anything more than that. Telescope, I could place up the top, but I don't think it's necessary really. No, I think it's... I think it's fine. We will have a crow's nest, so I'll place that just there for now, because obviously we do need to get away up there, so we'll have a, where is it, corridor with ladder in here. In terms of it, uh, its armour, we're going to go with probably steel armour. I would like heavy steel armour. The difference is quite considerable, but that requires metallurgy tier 4, whereas this one requires tier 2, so I'm going to go with the steel arm for now. And we'll test it. In terms of cost, I would very much like it to stay under 1,500, but I think we've already basically pushed that too far. Too heavy to fly, no propulsion, and needs more supply hatches. Well, propulsion is going to be very simple. It will be uh, simply a... I think we'll go with a sail. Uh, I'll just place that in there for now. But lift is a different story. So at the moment, in terms of lift, we don't have anything. I'm very tempted with just using... A big dust tank 
the problem with that, or something like this, um, the problem with that is that obviously it's not armoured. So if this gets shot, it just disappears. Basically, it's going to fall out of the sky. Is that a problem? Yeah, yeah, traditionally. Um, <laughs> so I think what we'll do instead is go with a large, uh, just go with a suspendium chamber, which gives us a service ceiling of 134 meters. That's far too high. Instead, I'm going to go with one and then two of those 77 meters service ceiling with that one and obviously resources we'll have a small coal star two of those just to make sure those work we need supply hatches we need more crew crew is simple actually i just really need to remove that and then go to command and crew and to a berth obviously we haven't put any way to repair this thing and we haven't put any nowhere to repair it and nowhere to Heal the crew. But hopefully, it'll do the job. Um, you know what? I think I will go back to corridor with ladder. Recommended crew is 19, I think it said. There we are. And we need a way for it to move. I think we'll have quarters there. That's taken us to. Yeah, more than enough. Actually, what I'll do is I'll remove those two, move that, and have those. Ah, sadly, I can't have it exactly how I wanted to put it. Um, there will be sufficient because I'll then just connect up that. Actually, what I'll do is put a fire point there. So we've got a couple of fire points around the place. Three, actually. <laughs> It's probably really good for water. No propulsion and no way to... No way for it to uh, get resources. So we'll have probably a steel supply hatch. Like that. And no propulsion. In terms of propulsion, I could go with a sail. Something like that. Oh, actually, I can't because of the crow's nest. Can you place a sail down? You can. You can actually place a sail downwards. That would work, but the speed is only 82. If we had a small propeller, that would be... That would be even less. I don't mind, though. Just having a small propeller there. Hmm. Yeah. It's not bad. Out of that, we have one of these big sails in. Like that, which is just... Ludicrous. What about if we have, say... That size sail. 69, but it's also very heavy. Got stuff at 45 meters servicing, which I don't really care because we're sending these things, which, as you can see, the arc is... We're shooting stuff on the ground, so I don't really care. You know what? We'll go with that. We'll go with that for now. We're going to go with probably some more modules. This is going to be a lot more efficient. Um going backwards. It's a lot faster going backwards, this thing. We will see in a moment if that is the case, but I believe it is. Because when I put on some slope pieces, although I'm very tempted to go with something like this. Just to give it a little edge that I think it needs. Mm, do I need it like that, or can I just go with say the Two B ones. I quite like the spikes going up the back. We could just go with those ones. There's that, and then there's that. <laughs> I don't know. There's something. I think that's a bit too over the top. Hmm. Oh, does that just seem to fit in quite nicely? That seems to work. I may alter this. I may put the spikes further back. Let me know your opinion on that one. Right, we do need to name it, so let's have a look. So, it f so it's an airship, so we need to name it after something that flies. Um, trying to think of a decent thing. How about the heron? 
Hang on, that's Hera. Heron, because I saw one the other day. That's the only logic in that one. Save the design. Heron, it is... 1,686, so a little bit over budget, but not too bad. Coal is okay for what we need. We're probably going to ground it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We could almost certainly get rid of coal, but because of the logistics in the campaign, you now have to think about these things. Crew is 24 out of uh, recommended of 20. Speed is 51, so it's poor. Service ceiling is 47, so even poorer. And ammo should hopefully be very good. Supply is 13 of 16. Command every 17 seconds, okay. So we won't be making much commands on this, but we do have an extra 30, 40% accuracy. So hopefully this will work. Right, we'll leave that. Let's go over to combat. And I want to have a day fight. We'll add a building in. And I'm going to add in a silent watcher. Uh, these are generally placed right at the back. And I'm only going to place the one in, okay? So we'll go to our airship, to the SP. P. Heron, and it's going to go right back here, because why would we not? I will start the fight, I will immediately put it onto aimed fire, and it says there, aim carefully, and you can see what they're doing now, is they're getting shot, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, but they are now launching torpedoes, and you can see they build the torpedoes, which I think is really good, and good grief, look at that, we're already receiving a, a lot of damage. Have I put the right armor on that? That doesn't seem to be the right armor. It's taking far too much damage. They are firing cannons. Let's see what our torpedoes do. I'm going to check that up, but I don't know if that's the right ammo. Uh, armor. So here we go. First torpedo. Not bad. Hit on the rear. Direct hit on the guns. Another direct hit at the top. With some secondary fires started. Let's go back to see what's happening. Takes a while to get there. And, yeah, we've taken damage and also some leaking in the suspendium chamber. But remember, this thing reversing is cheap. It's like 600 points. You know, we are, you know, overpointed by three times. We should have three of these, but I wanted to try it. Or around about three. Okay. Well, that, that works. I mean, there's no big surprise there. We expected that to uh, function as it did. That's a win. Oh, that's so cool. And there we go. Vic and Terry. Yeah, better better. Open design. Heron. Armor. Steel armor. Phil. It's definitely steel armor. What if we put heavy steel armor on? It's going to cost more on the service ceiling. It is dangerously low. Yes, it is dangerously low. I know there's been some designs that I've made in the past where we'd have like a gantry coming off somewhere and we place in some suspendium dust tanks and such simply to have it as like a almost like not a temporary thing but it's like this is the support structure to get it to where it needs to go. Um, at this stage it's service ceiling dangerously low. We could have made a ground ship at this point. Um, Okay, so steel armor is in there. Let's see the difference between the steel armor and the heavy steel armor. Steel armor is HP 50, weight 10, whereas the heavy steel armor is naturally... Well, it weighs twice as much at 20. And its HP is almost double at 90. The absorption on the steel armor, it absorbs 16 blast damage and 6 piercing, where the heavy steel armor absorbs 24 blast and 12 piercing. So it's double... The amount of piercing damage, resistance, or absorption, should I say, and uh, eight more on the blast damage. Difference being, the cost would put us to nearly 2,000. I don't think that is worth it. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to combat once again uh, on a day fight, and we're going to add in a building, and it's going to be the standard building. Silent Watcher will have it as one, two. That is... 1,392, we'll go for probably another smaller building. There's defensive structure, 17 I think it was. 1,600 on the nose there. We're going to check out the Heron, which is 1,600 and something or other. Um, 1,686, so I am overpointed by a little bit, but I don't really care too much. I'm going to go to aim fire. And let's see if we can survive this. So there's their shots coming in. You can see the majority of those are missing us, which is 
you know, exactly what we expect at this range, but the ones that do hit will obviously cause some damage. And if you go to outside view, you can see they have caused and are continuing to cause a severe amount of damage. I'm going to ground that ship. We've already got a fire in the suspendium chamber and there's an explosion. We've lost a suspendium chamber, so that thing is not flying anywhere. So, it's curious that it takes so much damage. Anyway, our shots are out. We've got a direct hit to the central tower, which has taken out a huge chunk of wall and exposed the armory at the back there. Another explosion at the front that's caused secondary explosions and a fire for a moment there before the fire was exploded. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we have managed to do good damage there, but I don't think that we can win this fight. I think that eventually we'll hear an explosion to the left, and what will most likely happen is that it's already happened I can hear it I can actually hear it but dead surely oh <laughs> we come back to that yeah that didn't survive well at all hmm okay all right we need to do something about this this is not working why I mean, everything's explored easily. We need to fill it. Well, we need to do something. Admittedly, we've only done two tests, so, you know, take that with really a pinch of salt. What do we need to do? It either needs to be more expensive and better armoured, or it needs to be cheaper. We could cheapen it out by... How many points? Telescope is... Doesn't tell me. Brilliant. Just what I want. Command and crew. Telescope is 130, followed by the crow's nest of 20. So we can get 150 points off. That'll bring us to almost the intended cost. Will that help? What, 40% less, less accuracy that range? No, it won't. So that's something I don't think we can remove. Explosion damage is, yeah, it's just the size of it. We just need to keep this thing up. Like, okay, we need we need armor. We need heavy steel armor. Don't know if this is the right choice. Actually, what about, say, reinforced wood armor? Um, maybe, because we're versing cannons. And it's, it's piercing, I think. The majority of weapons that these stack structures have are cannons. That's what you often see. So. Cannon. Piercing damage, 50. And the HP on the wooden armour is, well, it absorbs 12 piercing. So that's twice as much as the steel armour. And it's got more health. Let's... That might be it. It's certainly not bad. Forward drag, let's just not look at that. Backwards drag, much better. <laughs> Coal's fine. Oh, it's water that I want to check out. Water's okay as well. Save the design. I'm going to overwrite the heron. Yeah. It could be that. It could, it could, it could be a simple little tweak like that. Back to a day fight. Add a building. Same thing again. One, two... And three, like that. Add in airship. Heron. Go in here. Start the fight. Aim fire. Maybe aim fire is not the way to go. There's the shots coming in. Outside view. You see, we are taking shots. But we have more HP and we're more resilient to this type of ordnance. Still doesn't mean we're not going to explode as soon as one gets through. But we've made some improvements. Obviously, if we were versing things with rockets, this would not take... It would not take as many hits. But we shall see. We're at a range as well that we are actually launching our second salvo of torpedoes before the first even got in. First salvo, <coughs> excuse me, um, has managed to take out their barracks and it's burning at the, st at the stack. Let's go over to the left. 
see what we're like. So we're in a much better state, but they are chipping holes in it now. We've taken, by the sound of it, <laughs> we've taken a lot of stuff out by the sound of it. Oh! Right, there's some critical mass. That's gone, and I don't think that's got ammo. So I reckon that we will target the one at the back this time. Actually, it looks like it's automatically attacked the one at the back. Yeah. First couple of shots, hit and miss. Oh, second shot. Second salvo, brilliant. Taking out all them cannons. That's good. That's what we want to see. So they've lost a lot of firepower there. And there's the ammo star going up, which should hopefully... I mean, that is no longer with ammo. It might still have ammo further down, though. But I am going to retarget to the front one, just because, well, we know for a fact that it has ammo. And I knew the salvo was coming anyway, so hopefully the ones still on their way, these ones probably, they might take that out. Yeah, there's the ammo. That's got no ammo. Let's see what the front one. Oh, that was still firing at the back. That's no, that's no longer in play. Let me pause it a second. We'll have a quick look at our our ship. I know we've just got a fire because I've heard it. I heard them put it out. Okay, so it's seen better days. <laughs> yeah, it's seen better days. The reason why I've not made a much bigger vessel is because we have tried that in the past where we've stacked a lot of these torpedo launches in one go and they just explode they just they just have that death star syndrome as when you get this critical hit and it's that the whole thing goes up as you can hear it's going on right now because we've just exploded and we've lost <laughs> um yeah is that a draw draw yeah <laughs> we, we we went boom so that's why we don't do it because the more you have the more it's going to just explode in critical mass admittedly if you make a much bigger ship you can put in basically fire bricks and like bits where if it explodes it's only going to take out like corridor and stuff like that whereas if this goes up it's going to chain reaction a lot but that's just the you know that's just this ship if we made it bigger It'd be a lot more expensive. It would still have that problem of when one goes up, it takes other others with it. Just because the aerial torpedo it easily explodes, the ammo store also um, explodes easily. Easily so. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let's have one more fight. Let's let's just like say randomize it. There's the combat. So this is in fog. Building, Silent Watcher, one, two, building, three, there we are, and airship, Heron, going to put it there, start the fight, and I'm going to ground it. Normally, I've been issuing orders for it to go to aim fire, I'm not going to put aim fire, I'm going to leave it to see what happens. Admittedly, that's probably not the best idea now that I think of it because we are inside a fog bank, which means we're even more inaccurate than we usually are. So I think I will change my option there. <laughs> change my uh, mind on that one. And you can see, oh, we're not even within... It's, you know, we're not even... With... That first shot was not even close to these. That one's sailed past and blown up shrubbery. That one has a first hit at this one, but I know that this one's the one that's been targeted. Well, I guess to me, because normally... It automatically targets the things that are the highest threat, which in this case are these. Oh no, it seems to be targeting the one at the back. But you never know. They could have just been they could have been aimed at this one and it's just missed. Yeah, there you go, look. Maybe that is the case. So that's it seems to be hitting a bit better now, now that we've gone on aim fire. Quick zoom in. How we doing? Taking a lot of damage. Admittedly, this is a very limited, and I say this often, a limited sample set. We were only using, you know, we've only had three or four fights. Um, very small amount of fights to really compare stuff. But it seems that changing that armor immediately helped it. It should, anyway, because we have 25% more HP on the armor. 
and double the amount of absorption for for this type of weapon. Obviously, if we were versing things with rockets, then we wouldn't do as well. But in my experience, there's more direct shots from these static structures. So, yeah, that's good. Um, I think I think we're still firing against the one at the back, but I'm I'm going to tell it to retarget the one at the front because well it's it's the one that's firing and this is burning so let's see they're still sailing past that one and that is all kinds of out of water I'm gonna say because yeah that's that's not doing too well is it it really isn't all right well I'm still targeting that one let's see what damage we have sustained. I'm going to move it up a little bit as well. There you go. Hmm. Sustained a bit of damage, but nothing major. No, nothing major at all. Where is the height of this? I'm going to check the service ceiling to see just how high this thing can go. Wait for it. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. So, it's basically got enough to keep itself off the ground. Uh, there's a win. Our first victory. We had a couple of losses, followed by a draw, and now a victory. Okay. Good changes there. Good changes. I'm reasonably pleased. We have made something like this in the past. Very similar, in fact. I think it had... I think it had the same complement of torpedoes. A slightly different form factor. It looked different, but... That's what we've got. Okay. Fairly happy with what we've accomplished. I've just realised as well, actually, that I could make this faster going forward, couldn't I? Mm. There. Just because normally we put the telescope there, so... <laughs> that's why. I think I prefer it without, actually, but we're going to, just for the sake of... Let's see for the sake of completeness. Do I want to remove it? I do I want to keep it on? I really don't want to keep it on. It, it it It's 33 cost. I really don't want to put it on. Okay. Either way, that is... That is the Heron. Pretty happy with it. Um, I think we do need to do some more trials. But overall, the intended operation is... Alright, I think. It's original goal to take out at long range some static structures and pound for pound, cost for cost, it sort of does that. Admittedly more testing is required, but it seems to do that quite well. Maybe making it a little bit larger, putting in some barriers for the explosion so it doesn't chain react and take out everything, maybe that would be of some benefit. Maybe making a much bigger version would also be pretty good. Or maybe even just making it even cheaper. Like, just remove, just strip everything off. So we'll have one fire extinguisher. We'll have one ammo store for all of these. We'll get rid of the telescope. Get rid of the crow's nest. Get rid of one of the suspendium chambers. Just put a balloon on the back. And just spam it. I reckon if we did that, we may get it. And, and, and put it on weak armor as well. If we did that, we may get this to... I'm not going to say under a thousand... But I think between 1,000 and 1,200 is reasonable. Don't think it would be a good idea because it would be very much a one-shot deal. You send it in, it does some damage, it explodes. How much damage would it do? Probably not as much as what this can do. Either way, if you have any suggestions for alterations, changes and fresh designs, then by all means let me know in the comments. And as always, we will go from there. Hope you have enjoyed this little bit of airships. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.